Okay, first thing we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch our uh, Adroit Photo Forensics and uh, the first time that you launch it uh, you will get a preferences screen you can just go ahead and leave all the defaults in there and then you'll move on to this screen which tells you that you have an unregistered copy and tells you what you can and can't do to it so we'll go ahead and uh, cut that off or click off or click OK on that and there you have the um, home screen of uh, Adroit Photo Forensics. And you can see it's divided into kind of a toolbar up at the top and then uh, some case information on the top left. Um, we need to uh, set up a, a case ID. In this case, we'll just call it case one and case name. We're going to call this Swiss. Uh, and you'll see why here in a little bit. Uh, and it creates a, a case path for you case creation date and last modified and you can make some comments in here uh, this is a demo of APF and then you look to the right and it has examiner information I've already created my uh, uh, my name here uh, but uh, what you really ought to do is go through go and click the little plus sign and put your full name in there uh, company address and all the rest of that and when you save that it will auto populate this area below uh, including the comments section. The lower part of the screen uh, shows you uh, your evidence and uh, one of the nice things about APF is that you can uh, load uh, or add uh, numerous uh, pieces of evidence um, and it allows you to not only add uh, images both in case and raw file images uh, but also access folders either on uh, the examination machine or on the uh, exa examined machine, the subject machine, uh, or you can look at a physical drive again uh, um, in both the cases of, of, of physical drive and folder access if you're accessing a subject machine then obviously you want to write protect that uh, before you do that. It uh, gives you uh, an option for uh, analysis, uh, the kinds of things that you want to do. Uh, it's pretty extensive, uh, but it allows you to save it as a profile. And uh, the best recovery basic validation is the one that we're going to use uh, for our uh, exercises. Um, then once you've actually added one, it'll fill in this information down to the right. In this particular case, we're going to use a really, really small image uh, file. Uh, and uh, it's uh, actually an image of a uh, floppy disk and it only has a, a very few pictures on it. It's uh, this image right here um, and we're doing that because it's very quick and very uh, 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 small and you can see that it uh, adds the uh, the image file there. It tells us that it's, uh, this is the drive and that it's a regular disk image and it's uh, 1.4 megs which is uh, correct because it's a floppy it has one partition. It hasn't done the MD5 sum or any of the rest of that as of yet. Uh, and it's filled in this information which will eventually go into our report format. Uh, then we go ahead and click Analyze. And it will take a little while for uh, the drive uh, to get analyzed. And uh, um, when it does so, it's going to give us a number of other options. If you look as it's being analyzed on the left hand side, you can see what is a bitmap uh, and locates where these files are actually located. Um, and uh, you can also see the, uh, the progress bars as it goes through the different phases of analysis. And it's obviously pretty quick here. And uh, at the end, it gives us this listing of uh, four active uh, files. Uh, uh, eight uh, that are embedded. Uh, these are typically uh, um, thumbnails that are embedded uh, within uh, the uh, original image. Uh, you can see the, uh, in this case it's 160 by uh, 107 pixels um, and uh, uh, sequentially carved. These are ones that are in unallocated space that were found uh, contiguously. Uh, then there were others that were embedded in the carved space I'll let you read the manual to uh, get those definitions. Likewise, the invalid and partially carved one, which doesn't have a thumbnail, obviously, because uh, it's uh, a partial image. 
uh, but in any case it also allows you to uh, to go ahead and, and uh, group them and sort them um, uh, as you uh, as you see fit um, so uh, uh, that's pretty spiffy but that really doesn't get you much that you can't do with a lot of other software uh, the tools that you have up here uh, allow you to do uh, a lot of other other things you can look at the entire photo gallery um, which is basically what you're doing here now um, and then you can do the photo viewer you can look at all the photos all the active um, whatever ones you want uh, but we're just going to go ahead and click all of them, all of them and it gives you uh, a photo viewer gives you all of the uh, information the metadata on here the exif data uh, the file uh, metadata it also tells you uh, where it was found the clusters and uh, any uh, the fragments that it uh, that it finds um, and so uh, it uh, gives you a lot more information than you typically get uh, from uh, most uh, file recovery uh, software um, and it also has tabs up there to allow you to, to, to see that same information um, and uh, here you see the raw EXIF data uh, here in the uh, metadata EXIF files and you can uh, see uh, uh, the stored thumbnail that that one has uh, and then there's a second stored thumbnail uh, in there as well um, and you see the second thumbnail is 500 by uh, uh, 333 and the other one is uh, it's probably much smaller now that's the same size okay I made a liar I made a liar out of me uh, no biggie um, the one of the other cool features that uh, uh, a droid photo forensics allows you to do is create a timeline and uh, we're going to make a timeline of all the photos and we're going to go ahead and click show <clears throat> this doesn't look terribly uh, impressive with uh, with a small number of files on here and the relatively uh, small number of uh, dates but what's cool is that it takes all of the files and it puts them in a timeline. It gives you the dates on the timeline. And these orange dots that you see um, are the relative sizes of the number of files that there are here. In this particular case, uh, there's only one file uh, at that particular location. Out here uh, in the unknown area, there are more files uh, uh, located here. Uh, so it gives you a relative size of, uh, of the, uh, the data here. Um, uh, shows you the, uh, how many files are up there as well. Uh, this is particularly good if you're trying to uh, get pictures of a before and after some particular event uh, or you're trying to, uh, to demonstrate um, a group of activity. You'll see a cluster uh, around some dates uh, and you'll see a a much larger uh, uh, ball for the amount of files there. Uh, it's just a, a, another tool that you can use to, uh, uh, to do some analysis that uh, is pretty handy. Um, you can sit here and, and get the uh, recovery counts, uh, number of files, etc. that you have um, for each of these. Uh, then uh, uh, you uh, have a couple other options here. You can generate reports um, and uh, the report uh, can uh, include all the files etc uh, and uh, you can uh, click the report settings and tell it what you want in that report. Uh, it really is, uh, is pretty, uh, uh, pretty cool uh, report generator. Um, we're just going to cancel this and uh, uh, I'll let you generate a report on your, uh, on your case. Uh, uh, give me an opportunity to see that. Uh, this is your clipboard to allow you to uh, 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 the log file uh, to take a look and see what you did and it keeps a very extensive log as you can see uh, here and it uh, gives you uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of raw data uh, that you can use <coughs> uh, for your notes. And then the super feature of this whole process is called uh, the uh, smart filtering and smart filtering um, is a set of algorithms that look at files uh, in order to uh, uh, attempt to uh, find items of interest and uh, a couple of things that uh, it does that aren't uh, very uh, uh, complex 
uh, and a lot of other things do are ones that uh, meet hash uh, values that you uh, are interested in. So you can uh, determine either uh, duplicates based upon their hash uh, or uh, uh, positives or negatives in terms of the hashes. Um, but a lot of a lot of programs will do that. The real power in this uh, is uh, uh, the ability to uh, to go ahead and look for explicit information, uh, child information, and for faces, um, and also where the thumbnails uh, mismatch uh, the content of the file, and uh, that's a hiding technique uh, that will be used by uh, some pedophiles. So this is a very brief introduction to uh, adroit uh, photo forensics and I hope it was useful and until next time have a good day.